Good morning. This this recording is for May 5th, uh, Wednesday, and uh, the video is going to be Book of Revelation chapter 4. We're beginning in, in the, uh, uh, we finished the letters to the churches, and we're, we're, we have the heavenly scene in chapter 4. Uh, we're going to go to prayer in just a moment, and keep, keep us in prayer. Uh, sometimes the camera doesn't work right. We've been working on this for an hour or more, trying to get the camera fixed. But uh, keep us in prayer, and, and there's things we get, a, we get hit with problems just like everyone else. Uh, so keep us in prayer all the time. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your word. Lord, to feast on our daily bread, this living word. And we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, come, take over this message, deliver it with power and authority. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to turn off the music and blow the shofar. I want to remind you that we continue to have uh, video messages every Wednesday and every Sunday. Uh, this video would be on Revelation chapter 4. Uh, for the Sunday video, we're, we're going to do part 2 of comfort in the midst of suffering. And then uh, Mother, Mother's Day message. If you're in town and can be with us Sunday morning, 10 o'clock at the sanctuary, our, uh, we'll have a very special Mother's Day message. And then uh, don't forget the various other meetings. We have the women's tea. The women are having a uh, fellowship and tea time May 22nd from 11 to 2. And that will be at our fellowship hall. Uh, that's a Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then men's breakfast every last Saturday of the month, 8 a.m. at our fellowship hall. And these are special times for the men and women to get together. Every Wednesday night, our Bible study, Book of Revelation, and we have Kids Club on Wednesday night. If you want to bring the kids with you, we have an instructor for Kids Club. Uh, I think that covers all the special announcements for now. We're going to get into the Book of Revelation, Chapter 4. We finished our teaching on the letters to the seven churches. And those letters, uh, sometimes people are, they want to get deeper into the Book of Revelation, but it's important that we study those letters, those letters to those specific churches, to, to the church ages throughout, throughout uh, different uh, periods of church history throughout the last 2,000 years, and then speaking to our lives too, those things that we need, those things that are good to hang on to, those things that we don't need in our life to, to uh, repent of and get rid of and go forward. And so the Lord always, throughout those letters to the churches, He always says it's not too late uh, I know your works. Uh, he, he says uh, it's not too late to repent. Hang on to those things that are good. And he's, he's ready to receive us always whenever we repent of wrongdoing. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4 and we'll read through there and begin to look into this, this very important chapter. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, the, the, the Apostle John records... After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. He who sat there was like jasper and sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. And around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. And the first living creature was like a lion and the second like, like a calf. And the third living creature had the face of a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures having six wings were full of eyes around and within 
And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you, you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. And so this is a beautiful, this is, this is the chapter, chapter 4. It's a beautiful vision, a beautiful scene in heaven of the throne of God and the glory of his presence there. And so we want to look at, um, remember, remember the book of Revelation is written in chronological order. So uh, you have the, 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 uh, the, cha the first four chapters uh, this first describing the past, describing the God of creation, describing the Lord. Then you have chapters two and three, the letters to the seven churches, the church age, the 2,000 years. And then in chapter four, the scene changes. It's not on earth anymore. The scene is in heaven. So you have the church no longer spoken of on the earth uh, for, for the coming chapters. So chapter one is the past. Chapter two and three is church the church history up to the present time and then chapters 4 through 22 are the future so again if you take these chapters out of order it doesn't make sense but if you study in chronological order as things happen that's the way it's written then it makes sense and so uh, in chap remember in chapter 1 verse 19 the Lord tells John write the things which thou hast seen the things which are the things which uh, and and the things which shall be hereafter uh, so in in revelation chapter one uh key words right at the beginning of the chapter uh, excuse me in chapter four right at the beginning of the chapter it the first few words says after these things after these things after what after the the letters to the seven churches uh, after chapter 1 and after chapter 2 and 3, then, then this is what the Lord wants John to see and to record. Uh, chapter 4 is the heavenly scene. So chapter 1 is the past events. Chapter 2 is the church age up into present time, the times, the, ch the church age, and also called the times of the Gentiles. So from, from Pentecost until now, the Lord has been dealing with the Gentiles. During the tribulation period, he is dealing with the Jews again. And so it's the, called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's to bring Israel to salvation. Uh, in uh, verses uh, 1 and 2 of chapter 4, if this sounds familiar to you, uh, let's look at New Testament scripture here. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, the trumpet. He talks about a trumpet. I heard the, the voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me. And look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So at the, at the catching up or the rapture of the church, the, all believers will hear the sound of the trumpet. Others won't hear it. They won't know what happened. But believers will hear the sound of trumpet because the Lord is calling us to rise up. Look what the trumpet tells John here. Come up here. And so the Lord will, there will be the sound of the trumpet and the Lord will call us up. And it will happen instantaneously. It happened immediately. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised and corruptible and we shall be changed. So the, the souls of those that have gone on to be with the Lord come back with the Lord and they receive their glorified body first and they will, then we will, those that are alive at the time of Christ's coming will be changed in the twinkling of an eye at a moment. Uh, let's go back to Revelation 
chapter 1, uh, Revelation 4, verse 1. Uh, notice John says, after this, after what? The completion of church history, the completion of the letters to the seven churches. We are very near that moment when the Lord will return for his church and say, come up here. So we'll rise to meet the Lord in the air at that trumpet sound. Uh, John saw a door was open in heaven. And a voice as, it, of a, a, as if a trumpet, a, a voice as it were of a trumpet. And this is the rapture of the church, the catching up of the church. Multitudes of saints going up to meet the Lord, our Savior, in the twinkling of an eye. And this is the, this is the rapture. It's, it, the, you know, a lot of people say, well, rapture, the word rapture is not in the scripture, but catching up is to be caught up. And it's the literal uh, physical return of Christ in the heavens. Remember at the rapture the Lord doesn't come down and set his feet on the earth. We will rise to meet him in the air. Saints will be called out of this world. It's a physical calling a catching up. The dead in Christ will be glorified first then we which are alive at that time uh, will the, every born again believer will be glorified will be caught up and glorified Many of the cults over the years have set dates and even gone up to hilltops and housetops dressed in white robes, which is kind of silly because we won't need robes. The Lord is going to supply the robes. We'll be, we'll be clothed in his righteousness. Our robes will be white and clean and they will be a spiritual robe prepared for us by the Lord. It's wrong to set dates. Dates can bring discouragement. Many people have set dates and it confuses uh, Christians and, and then many get discouraged and walk away from the Lord because they say, well, he was supposed to have come on that date. Matthew 24, verses 36 and 37 says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. We don't know, this. We don't know the dates, but we can know the season. We know what what season we're in but as of the days of noah were so also will be the coming of the son of man so matthew chapter 24 verses 36 and 37 36 tells us not to set dates we don't know the day no one knows the exact day of the coming of the lord and then verse 37 tells us we'll know the season it'll be like it was in the days of noah when when god was uh no and god told noah to build the ark Noah was telling people to repent because judgment is coming. Nobody wanted to listen. Everybody was caught up in sin. All of mankind was sinful. The Lord wanted to destroy all of mankind, but he found Noah and his family faithful. And many have set dates and, and have said, well, after that date passed, well, the Lord came in, in a spiritual way and, and nobody saw him. When the Lord returns in the heavens, his church will bodily be raised. We'll be changed and raised. We will see the Lord in the heavens. The Lord will return bodily in the heavens at the rapture of the church, Revelation 4, 1 Corinthians 4 and 16. And he will bodily return at his revelation in Revelation 19 and 11. He returns to the earth. So the second coming of the Lord has the two parts coming in the heavens to call his church out before judgment begins on the face of the earth. And then he comes at his revelation where every man on the face of the earth will see the Lord's return. Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and while they looked up steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He left in a glorified body. Jesus had his glorified body. He left in that manner from the Mount of Olives, and it says he's going to return in like manner. In, in Luke chapter 24, verse 39, uh, Jesus said, Behold my hands and my feet, it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. He was in a glorified body, and the Lord, uh, he has kept the marks in his hands and his feet 
in his glorified body. There's no wounds there, but there are marks showing that it is he who was crucified for us. He is risen. We serve a living Savior. He is alive. He has risen from the dead, and he's in a glorified body, and he lives forevermore, and he gives us who believe eternal life also. In Luke 24, uh, 41 and 42, And while they believed not for joy and wondered, he said to them, Have ye here anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And this gives us a picture of our glorified body. You won't need to eat if you're in a spiritual glorified body, but you will be able to eat and enjoy food. And this is, a, this is an awesome promise. Uh, you, you won't have to eat, but you can still enjoy the things that we enjoy today. Uh, he has a visible glorified body. He was seen in 1 Corinthians 15, verses uh, eight, 5 through 8. It gives us a list of those who saw Jesus. He was seen of Cephas, which was Peter, and of the twelve, and of above five hundred saw him alive, and of James, and of all the apostles, and Paul also. So the Jesus in his glorified body was visible. He was seen by these all these followers here. And first Thessalonians four and sixteen says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Some say the dead uh, rise first because they have six feet further to go than those that are standing on the earth. And that's a little joke. But uh, then it says in verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This will happen very fast. Remember in 1 Corinthians 15 and, and 51 through 53, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. We're going to be glorified. We are going to be, we have, we have been chosen. Uh, we have been sanctified. We've been justified. And then we're going to be glorified at the coming of the Lord. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the la at the last trump, for the trump trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on in this corruptible must put in incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Uh, in verse 52, in a moment, at the twinkling of an eye. Uh, and some, some people say, well, at, at the blink of an eye. Well, it, it doesn't say that. It says twinkling of an eye. Uh, a flash, in the, a flash or in the, in the uh, NIV, in, in, in a twinkling of an eye would be at the speed of light. I just want to give you some of this. Uh, GE Corporation recorded the blink of an eye at 11 one hundredths of a second. That's how fast an eye can blink. But it says the twinkling of an eye. Well, that would be the speed of light. 186,000 miles per second. That's how fast light travels. So we, we won't, a lot of people say, well, you know, when I see signs in the earth and, and I, hear that, I hear that people are starting to rise up, you know, it, we're all going to be changed instantly and taken up. You're not going to have time to wait until later to repent. Today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put off coming to Jesus by faith. Don't put off believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as our risen Savior, as the Messiah and the Savior of mankind, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. People, people have all these crazy ideas that I can wait till the last minute, then I can get right with the Lord. That's not the way it works. The rapture is going to take place. The return of the Lord will happen instantly at the speed of light you won't have time to repent then today is that if you're listening to this video and you don't know jesus as lord and savior today is the day of salvation don't put it off believe on the lord today don't waste time uh it, you won't be able to catch up with the church you need to you need to believe now the lord is great and his power is unlimited 
uh, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth heaven and the earth uh, God the God of creation will have no problem glorifying and transporting all of his saints at one time uh, this is going to take place it sounds this sounds so so beyond our imagination I have to have to put it that way it almost sounds fantasy it sounds like Star Wars and beyond uh, I'm telling you these things are true it wouldn't be recorded in the Word of God if it wasn't going to happen exactly the way the Lord proclaimed it and Jesus himself appeared in a glorified body so we could have a little bit of understanding about how we are going to be changed and the dead in Christ will be raised in incorruption in incorruptible in a glorified body uh, so God is, is all powerful and his, his grace and his love towards us is tremendous and he'll have no problem doing what he said he would do here the the fool has said in his heart Psalms 53 and 1 there is no God the wise of this world are foolish toward God they, they, they don't consider the vastness of God's creation and his power Man, in his so-called brilliance, has placed a spacecraft in, in, in the heavens, and they think man, mankind thinks they're doing a wonderful thing. Remember, there was a spacecraft called Voyager they sent to shoot out into deep space, traveling at 45,000 miles an hour, 750 miles a minute, 12 and a half miles every second. That's how fast this spacecraft is traveling. Voyager has been traveling since 1977 and has passed several planets and traveled more than uh, more than a billion miles, probably more than two billion by now. Uh, in 1989, uh, the the, the, the uh, Voyager catapulted the, itself out of the solar, out of our solar system, and after doing that, it'll still take them four. It's, take Voyager 40,000 years to reach the first star. Traveling at that speed, it will still take 40,000 years to reach the first star, 107,000 years to reach the second star, still traveling at 45,000 miles an hour. God's creation is awesome and massive, and the Lord is able to catch us up in our glorified body and, and pass up all the spacecraft and instantly reach his throne uh, you know the world uh, thinks they have all that knowledge but they can't match God's knowledge God's power when the Lord returns for his church we will be changed in a flash and we'll zip past all the spacecraft and we'll, we will be glorified we'll be like him and we will be at that place where he has prepared for us Psalm 17 and 15 as for me I will behold the face I will behold thy face in righteousness and shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I'm going to be like you, uh, the psalmist says. 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we shall, shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The Bible calls it caught up. Well, some argue that that word rapture is not in the Bible. Well, the word Bible is not in the Bible. We believe we have a Bible, right? Uh, we've got one in our hand. And so it doesn't matter if it's not in the Bible. The, the terminology is caught up. And so that's the truth. Rapture means to be take, taken up or caught up. Rapuro in the Greek, translated into English, is rapture. Rapture means to be snatched away, and the scripture tells us we will be snatched away in the twinkling of an eye. It's important to take time with scripture. Uh, verse uh, Revelation 4 and 1, it has so much truth in it concerning the rapture. There's much confusion on the subject. A lot of people uh, get the two parts of the coming of the Lord mixed up, or the two sages, the, the catching up of the church and the second coming, coming of Christ. And so uh, the rapture and revelation. So the Lord will come in the rapture and then he'll come at his revelation in chapter 19. Revel rapture chapter four, revelation chapter 19. So the church is with the Lord in heaven 
in chapter 4. And in chapter 19, the church returns with the Lord when he comes back at the end of the tribulation period to set up his kingdom on the face of the earth. So between chapter 4, the catching up, and the, and, and the return of the Lord at Revelation 19, there's seven years of tribulation on the face of the earth. So that's a, that's a seven-year period when the church is caught up until the church returns with the Lord. There's a seven-year period. The first half of the Revelation is the Antichrist and the false prophet gaining power on the face of the earth, setting up this globalism, this one-world government, and so on. And that, then the second half of the tribulation is the, 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 the brutal control of the Antichrist on the face of the earth and requiring worship. And, and anyone who will not bow down before him would be put to death. Those who believe on the Lord after the rapture takes place will certainly be put to death. They'll, they'll, have, they'll be required to decide whether they're going to be loyal, remain loyal to Jesus or they're going to be um, um, turn their back on the Lord and worship the Antichrist. Those who remain loyal to Jesus will be put to death. Christian, uh, it's time to serve the Lord right now. Those who are watching right now and you're not a believer in Christ, there's no time to waste. It's time to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's so easy to become a believer. Just ask the Lord to forgive your sins, come into your life and be Lord of your life and ask him to help you serve him with all your heart until he comes. That's the easy way. We don't want to be here when the tribulation is going on on the face of the earth. Um, we're going to need to stop right there. Time on our video is limited. But we come, we come now to the Lord and we pray. We ask you, Lord Jesus, um, these are serious matters. We tell people... Uh, they need to believe on the Lord. We give them the salvation message, but we also need to tell them, if you don't want to believe now, you need to know the rest of the story. If you don't believe on the Lord now, there's another opportunity, but it's going to be, it's going to be awful. During the tribulation period, people will be treated uh, with brutality under the Antichrist, and those who refuse to reject Jesus will be put to death. You will be saved. You will have eternity, but you'll, it, it will require your life during the tribulation period. So now's the time to believe. Lord Jesus, take away my sins. I'm a sinner. I need you as Lord and Savior. Pray that prayer. Jesus, come into my life and be Lord of my life. I want to spend eternity with you. Help me to serve you in these last days, the remaining days until you return. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, you're part of the family of God now. We welcome you into the body of Christ. And we thank the Lord that you'll be able to go when, when the Lord comes back for his church. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Keep watching the videos and keep us in prayer. Amen.